Welcome to the 59th webinar organized by the Water Channel. This is also the 11th webinar that we are co-organizing with IIT Delft. These webinars are part of a process to extend learning and exchange beyond the classroom uh, to open it up to the wider global society within which IIT is located. So these webinars are free to attend and open to all. Um, we, the inhabitants of the Earth, refer to our planet as the blue planet. And this is because when seen from outer space, it looks very blue on account of the oceans, the seas, uh, the rivers and the lakes. However, we tend to forget that there is a whole lot of blue going on below the Earth's surface as well. A whole lot of blue. And I'm referring, of course, to groundwater. The Earth's groundwater resources are very huge and very important. Uh, groundwater accounts for 50% of all drinking water worldwide, 40% of all irrigation, and 30% of all the water used in industry. Besides, groundwater is important as a key component of nature itself, uh, which sustains rivers and prevents land from caving in. Despite all that, we don't know so much about our groundwater resources. Uh, for one, it is not so easy to detect and map groundwater resources in the first place because they are not directly visible. Uh, they can exist in the form of large aquifer systems spanning wide areas across watersheds and, of course, across national boundaries. Um, so this makes it difficult to detect, calculate, and understand groundwater resources, which in turn makes it difficult to manage them judiciously. And uh, it is for this reason that a large number of known groundwater sources are declining rapidly. To discuss this very important topic, we are very lucky to have with us Dr. Uh, Neno Kukuric. I hope I have pronounced your name properly, Neno, um, who is the director of ECRAC, which is, of course, the International Groundwater Resources Assessment Center. He's a hydrogeologist by training with about 30 years experience across 20 countries. And very importantly, he is at the moment heading several international interagency efforts to assess and study global groundwater resources, uh, especially uh, transboundary aquifers. Before handing things over to Dr. Neno, I would like to emphasize that this is an interactive webinar. We request you to please share your questions and comments throughout the session. You can do that through this chat window that you see over here, where I just typed here. We will keep collecting your questions and comments throughout the webinar and discuss them during the Q&A session, which will take place after Nino's presentation. So without further ado, uh, I would like to hand over the proceedings to Dr. Nino. Uh, please take it away. Thank you, Abraham. Thank you for this uh, introduction and welcome to, to everyone to this uh, short uh, uh, seminar dedicated to groundwater making uh, invisible uh, visible. Uh, in a short period of time, I would like to take you along to the uh, journey, uh, groundwater journey, and I will talk uh, briefly about monitoring of groundwater, assessing the groundwater, and of course, uh, management uh, of uh, groundwater. Well, these, <clears throat> these three uh, uh, aspects are uh, common aspects for, for many issues, and if you stay uh, in, in the field of water, uh, also uh, lakes, if you talk about lakes or, or rivers, we have uh, monitoring, assessment, and uh, management. Well, the, the, main well the, the main difference is that it's much easier to assess lakes and uh, uh, surface water, rivers, than groundwater because groundwater is invisible. Therefore, I will talk about additional aspect and that's how to make uh, invisible groundwater uh, more visible. So there was introduction uh, uh, briefly about groundwater and, uh, and myself. I work for uh, IGREC, which is uh, International Groundwater Center. And uh, our role is to facilitate and, and uh, promote international sharing of uh, information and knowledge on groundwater. And we are doing that already for more than 15 years. And being a UN affiliated uh, uh, center, uh, we uh, specially uh, work at, uh, on transboundary aquifers 
and, uh, and groundwater monitoring, and of course, information and knowledge uh, sharing. IGREC is a UNESCO Global Groundwater Center. It works closely with the WMO and uh, IH, and it is supported by government of the Netherlands. So that's the reason that, uh, that we are based uh, in Netherlands. Well, then if I start with a global perspective of uh, groundwater and, uh, and some uh, staggering figures uh, about use of groundwater worldwide, you will see that half of population in the world is drinking uh, groundwater every day and uh, that a lot of groundwater is used for irrigation and in industry. Not only that, groundwater uh, sustains ecosystems and it maintains the, the base flow of rivers, so there will be no uh, rivers or there will be very uh, uh, short without uh, groundwater. And then, uh, of course, groundwater is crucial for preventing seawater intrusion in countries like the Netherlands. It will be very difficult uh, to remain uh, if there were no groundwater and uh, having balance uh, with the uh, uh, salt water and uh, preventing intrusion. So, uh, despite these uh, impressive uh, figures, uh, still invisible groundwater is out of sight and out of mind of uh, most uh, people. I need to say here as well that uh, there are more figures on, on, on groundwater. Usually people start saying, well, groundwater makes up 97% uh, of all fresh uh, liquid water resources. But, you know, we can't use really all that water because uh, a part of the water is polluted already and uh, the part is very deep and uh, it's not economic economically viable to, to use it. And sometimes if you extract groundwater for one purpose, you endanger actually uh, groundwater users, other groundwater users. Uh, nevertheless, uh, groundwater is uh, much more important uh, than uh, it appears in, in daily life. So, the world is changing and we see uh, more and more water scarcity and we see that uh, <clears throat> surface water is becoming less available and that we rely more and more on groundwater. Uh, however, we still don't know sufficient about uh, uh, groundwater and uh, we need to do more about it. Uh, one more data on, on this, uh, 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 this slide is about population growth. We, uh, uh, don't talk too much about that. We talk about climate change, but much less about uh, population growth, and uh, especially in dry areas, um, uh, in uh, Africa especially. Well, so if we look how to build a case for invisible, uh, those goals are defined in uh, what is called uh, uh, Agenda uh, on Sustainable Development of United Nations. And as you probably know, there is uh, 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 Sustainable Development Goal 6, which is about uh, water and sanitation and related to, to many other goals. So that's, that's a call. And then we have, as I said, we have assessment which is needed to, to know uh, what the state of uh, groundwater resources we have monitoring, uh, which is uh, uh, important to, to follow the, the change of, uh, uh, of the state. And then, of course, we have management and, and governance, how to, uh, how to deal with a changing world. As groundwater is uh, invisible, uh, we very much need uh, this 
uh, outer circle, and that's uh, building the case for invisible groundwater. Because, you know, of course, we need better assessment and, and monitoring and more assessment and monitoring, but if something is, is invisible, then it's very difficult to attract attention of the community to do more on assessment and monitoring. Therefore, awareness, diplomacy, lobbying, synergy, and uh, capacity building are very important. So let me just uh, go through a, a number of uh, related slides related to uh, these four aspects. To start with the uh, uh, assessment, especially assessment of transboundary aquifers, because in each country, more or less, there are uh, organizations, usually geological surveys, which take uh, care of uh, assessment of uh, national resources and then groundwater resources but, uh, internationally. Uh, there are more than 60% of uh, large aquifers which are international. Well, as you know, uh, water is uh, stupid. Uh, it doesn't stop at the border. So this is what is shown on this slide, very simplified situation at, at, uh, to, to show a way how groundwater can cross the border. But of course, there are much more complex uh, situations. So. There are differences among countries, differences in language, classifications, and uh, reference systems, etc. And we need to harmonize all this information and data, and also to harmonize policies uh, and the legal documents in order to start collaboration on commonly shared groundwater resources. This process of uh, uh, assessment of uh, internationally shared uh, groundwaters or aquifers actually started just 20 years ago with a simple inventory in, in Europe, uh, whether just saying oh, countries, whether you agree that you share uh, uh, groundwater or not, so red or white. Then gradually, uh, this is snapshot from 2007 in Central Asia, um, we continued to assessment uh, worldwide. And this is, I think, a uh, very illustrative example of delineation of uh, uh, aquifers in uh, transboundary aquifers in Africa. And you see in 2002, uh, uh, we started just with, uh, with the circles and ovals. And uh, in 2000, and then gradually improving. And in 2015, there is uh, a map uh, of transboundary aquifers of the of the world, and this is a rough uh, delineation of uh, uh, transboundary aquifers, but at least well done with with the contribution of uh, hundreds and hundreds of hydrogeologists from all these countries. But this is uh, at least uh, now we know more or less uh, where the, the aquifers are. Well, we also have collected some additional information, some actually basic information on these aquifers, and this is also available. But it is also important that it's available online and in structured and uh, information system on transboundary aquifers. And I will talk a little bit later on on importance of uh, information technology uh, for uh, this uh, building a case for uh, invisible groundwater. But this is one of the examples, because uh, for the first time in history, we really have uh, uh, online system uh, showing uh, uh, the largest aquifers uh, in the world and basic information about those aquifers. Uh, there is also, as a result of the hard work, uh, assessment methodology developed. And you see that. <clears throat> it involves actually not only hydrogeology, but also environment, uh, uh, social economical aspect, legal institutional aspect. And it's very much about uh, harmonization, but all this is about cooperation. So cooperation, if people are willing to get together and uh, do something uh, on, on a common issue, they can achieve it. Uh, the last uh, 
slide about the uh, importance of uh, transboundary aquifers uh, for uh, uh, water security uh, is uh, just as an example that uh, among the, the, the most stressed aquifers in the world, large aquifers, uh, most of them are among the stressed aquifers in the world, the most of them are transboundary. So that's an uh, additional reason that uh, uh, we have to take care of, of these uh, precious uh, resources. But that was about assessment of uh, uh, state of groundwater globally. As we live in a changing world, we see that also uh, aquifers groundwater is, is changing due to uh, various environmental processes. We, we see change in, in uh, uh, precipitation pattern, uh, for instance, and uh, also a human impact, of course, a change of uh, land cover, groundwater abstraction, etc., etc. So, groundwater assessment can't be complete, really, if we uh, uh, don't have data on, on, on monitoring, and also you can't make any kind of prediction without uh, monitoring. Uh, basically, we can't manage what we don't measure. Uh, well, nowadays we have a lot of uh, uh, models, and we ha have also available information from uh, satellite, remote sensing, but uh, all these other approaches uh, need actually uh, terrestrial measurements uh, for verification. Uh, if you look, for instance, for uh, at these global models which are predicting climate change, you will see that uh, there are a lot of uncertainties depending what kind of model uh, one uses and what kind of uh, climate prediction and uh, apply scenarios. We will see, for instance, that uh, prediction is, uh, in one case, that groundwater recharge is going to increase in certain part of the world uh, or decrease, uh, depending on all these uh, uh, conditions. So uh, the other example is, is very recent, and uh, it's about GRACE, uh, which is satellite program, which gives a very rough uh, estimation on what is going on with the groundwater uh, reserves worldwide. But again, it's, it's very uh, rough. It's, it's a sort of uh, not really estimate, rather guesstimate. And uh, it's useful, but without terrestrial monitoring, uh, which is declining, unfortunately, we can't make uh, any better prediction. And that was uh, a reason for us that to uh, set up global groundwater monitoring, uh, uh, initiate the global groundwater monitoring network 10 years ago, and to improve quality and accessibility of groundwater monitoring information. Basically, having people networks and uh, portal. Uh, so, uh, people networks, uh, organizing, capacity building, uh, uh, trainings uh, all over the world, awareness as well o o about monitoring, and uh, making available a, a common uh, global portal where people can uh, uh, upload data, process monitoring data, and disseminate, share those data. So this is the other next example of technology uh, which uh, is helping us to make groundwater more uh, visible. Just to mention also, as a part of this program, there's a, a, a smartphone uh, app application uh, which can be used, of course, everything is uh, freely available, uh, to, can be used uh, to register groundwater levels in, in the field. The other a uh, very important uh, development is so-called sensor observation services. That means that we are not talking anymore about data exchange. We are talking about data sharing, and like Canada and America, and now they, they connect it with, uh, with our global system. It's simply uh, making exchange, uh, sharing of data, uh, formatting uh, that and making possible 
So the time of large databases is over. It, it is about sharing all kinds of information to get a global picture of what's going on, uh, really, what you can't see locally. There's problems with, they have problems with the sound again, so I have to click a little bit. Yeah. I think one of the things is maybe. Uh, yeah. Wim, I think it's one person. Um, is everybody able to hear OK? okay. Everybody apart from so Irina? Yes, please continue. Yeah. OK. So these Thanks. are important technological uh, developments. And uh, so uh, but let's, let's move to the third aspect. And uh, that's uh, groundwater management and governance. So we need uh, assessment and monitoring for informed uh, groundwater management and governance. Uh, difference between management and governance is that governance includes all stakeholders and not only those who uh, formally manage the groundwater. Now, uh, I would like to say a few words about new approaches, new tools, and thinking go out of box. Uh, a lot of uh, possible solutions are coming from the other disciplines. For instance, uh, smart crops are coming from agriculture, and we need to be aware of uh, of this uh, uh, this actually groundwater uh, related measures. Then, if we talk, uh, uh, for instance, the new technologies, we see how important g uh, serious gaming is uh, in uh, decision making process, and we implemented that in in many occasions, and uh, it, it it it's really very useful. Then, if we talk about new Technologies like uh, uh, solar pumping, uh, solar uh, su supported actually uh, te solar technology for the pumping of groundwater. Uh, we see a lot of advantages of it, uh, and uh, CO2 neutral and uh, uh, long term uh, good investment, and uh, incredible increase. I think that. Uh, in the last five years, in, in India, increased from 5,000 to 170,000. And uh, uh, so, but at the same time, uh, it's, uh, th there are also some shortcomings, for instance, for the, for the management. It's very difficult to control it and how much someone is uh, pumping. Then about uh, uh, multiple value of, uh, of groundwater. Uh, for instance, uh, how we could uh, persuade uh, Heineken's and Coca-Cola's of this world to look at groundwater not only as a, as a part of the production process, but also to get engaged in the whole aquifer together with the other stakeholders uh, uh, to realize that uh, they need to manage a uh, resource together. Yeah. I'm very sorry. We have a, an alarm in the building. Um, unfortunately, we had to cut this, uh, this event. We had to leave the room. Okay. That's, uh, that's uh, very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. So uh, let's, uh, uh, we are leaving now. And uh, so, you know, I, I'm just trying to wrap up with this. Uh, so think about. Uh, and I will I will look at your questions and I will answer to your questions uh, in uh, uh, in writing. I just wanted to wrap up that we need to uh, uh, pay attention to uh, global awareness and uh, we will have uh, groundwater as a World Water Day in in two years time. So making the visible visible uh, is uh, the most important is to strength and cooperation and knowledge sharing, uh, regardless uh, whether it's about monitoring, assessment, and governance. And uh, it is really working together. Uh, the most important, everything is about people and connecting them. I'm sorry that uh, I have to leave. I, I was looking forward to uh, uh, hear your questions. But again, I'm going to. Uh, read your questions and uh, answer to, to your question. Thank you very much. Bye.
Sorry, everyone. Uh, looks like uh, the people at IIT had to leave the room on account of a fire emergency. I hope everybody and everything over there is safe. Um, it's uh, really unfortunate. Uh, what uh, I can do is I can leave the room open so uh, you can uh, have discussions over the chat box. Um, I don't know what we can do over here. Perhaps the best thing we can do is uh, you can keep posting uh, your questions and I can make a commitment to you that we will bring your questions to Dr. Neno's uh, attention. Uh, we will we will get his answers in writing as he said and we will post this all up. We, we, we will post the questions and his responses on uh, this link that I'm putting up over here. Uh, so yeah, if you keep sending in your questions, uh, we are collecting them and uh, we will bring them to Dr. Nino's attention and we will make sure that he responds to them in writing and we will upload um, the responses on this web page. Um, thank you again for turning up and I'm really, really sorry that we had to cut the event short. Um, I mean, I, I, um, I, I, I'm not sure what else we can do about it. Like I mentioned to those of you who, who missed it, uh, there was a f um, fire emergency at IHE on, a, on account of which the speaker and uh, the other colleagues at IHE had to leave the room.